Hey everybody, it's Javad with an update on the project in Thralls. I'm here in my wood shop, and uh, it's been a little while. I, um, I have been getting work done on these, but I had a trip to China, and that took about two weeks, and um, it took me a little bit to get caught up and back in the groove uh, and diving back in. At the point that I left for China about three weeks ago, I had the base cabinets done. Um, and by base, I mean the, not B-A-S-S, -S, but just the base um, that I'd be working off of. And as you saw in previous videos, there's uh, extensive bracing inside here, and uh, it's all ready to go for uh, the next step. And the next step was using that beautiful walnut I showed you. And uh, this was the quarter sawn walnut that I went to Aura Lumber and found by digging into the bottom of uh, a pallet of non-displayed wood. It was a new shipment they got in. So check out the announcements at the top of the DIY loudspeaker project pad. Uh, there's This is the fourth installment in this build series. So I had the chance to break down all that walnut last weekend, and that's what you see here. So this is all that amazing walnut and I cut it up. So this is all dimensioned and ready to be used for the build technique that I'm using that I've, I've yet to describe to you. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of veneered speakers with full length grain walnut. I could have easily taken those panels and just used them um, vertically, horizontally, however I wanted to. But I've had this idea in my mind um, and I was thinking about kind of dovetails and uh, God bless you, David Eason, but I, I'm i not there yet. So uh, I've done dovetails before, but uh, doing dovetails on a cabinet like this would be daunting. So then I started thinking about box joints or finger joints. And uh, this led me to this idea of using panels in an interlocking, intersecting way up and down the cabinet. And so that's why I have all these narrow strips here. And as you can see, these are labeled. So these are front, back, short, side, long, side, short, front, back, long. And all these pieces are so that I can uh, do this. As you can see, I've got a good start. Oh, excuse my beer, take a little beer break. Got a pretty good start. I'm four layers in. There will be um, a total of about 11 per cabinet going up. And I just, just glued this up so I'm letting it dry. But as you can see, I have these pieces and they're, they're interlocking and staggered so that the corners lock together. I get more glue joint surface area here. And um, it'll create a really interesting look um, when I'm done. And I'll do a big generous round over or bevel on the sides. This was a 4-4 uh, thickness wood, which means it's about, um, it's almost an inch thick. It's like 5 16 And um, once I got into it, you know, I was originally going to plane all this down, but I thought, you know what, why not just leave that extra beautiful wood instead of just sending it into uh, the sawdust pile? Um, you know, I'll keep it. That way, I have plenty of meat in the corners here. To do a huge round over, I could, I'll easily be able to do a one to one and a half inch round over here. Um, and that's something I always like to do. I've found it helps with diffraction. Um, so yeah, I'm four on this one and I'm two on this one. And, uh, you know, this is the first time I've done this and I probably should have done a mock up. And if I was smart, um, that's what I would have done, but I'm not smart. So I just dove right in. And um, what happened is this one went relatively smoothly. That's why I've got four. This one started out a little rougher. Um, and the reason is, despite my best efforts, this enclosure, especially the, the top angle here, it's like 89 degrees, 88 and a half degrees. Um, normally that's good enough for any kind of cabinet making. But in this case, since I'm stacking these and they all need to be perfectly parallel all the way up, what happened was that angle at the top 
uh, meant that the first layer I laminated, they were offset from each other. So I, when I went to set the second layer, there was about an eighth inch difference. And um, so what I had to do is um, knock one of the panels off and then I widened that board. And so I squared it up on this edge so that on the top side, there was excess that I flush trimmed off. So I'm, I'm good now, I'm square on this cabinet. Caveat to you, if you wanna do this, you need a perfectly flat square first layer. And if I did it again, I would just do that first layer so it was coming off the top of the box as much as it needed to, to make up for that unsquareness and then work my way down. The unsquareness isn't a problem ultimately because uh, I flush, flush trim this, it's, it's quite flat. I mean, it's only like a degree or two off. And then eventually I'll glue a piece of walnut on the top and it's gonna be fine. And it'd be impossible to see that small of a difference. But anyways, that caused me some grief and I was about to slit my wrist yesterday. And so I took a break had a beer, thought about it for a while, and it all clicked in my mind, and I was out here late late in the night, but I slept well knowing that um, I could just start stacking these layers now. So it's a little tedious, but once, once you get everything square and started, it's, it goes really quick. And so the cool thing is I could come out here, I could prep one layer, glue it, go prep another layer here, glue it, and thanks to you know, the 70, 80 degree temps and the 30, 40 degree humidity, this one's dry by the time I'm done with, I mean, it's, it's set up enough that I can pull the clamps off this one and, and come to this one. And, um, and I, I can pretty much work all day, maybe with a little break here and there. Um, other cool thing you'll notice, I'm doing dove, uh, I'm sorry, um, biscuits. So every layer is biscuited to the next. And the way I'm laying these layers up <clears throat> is I initially come here with the long pieces and I just clamp, use bar clamps and I clamp them. And then I take the short pieces, which are all a little longer than they need to be. And I, I mark with a very sharp pencil the ID. Then I bring my marked wood over. Let's say this is one I marked. I put it on my table saw. I line it up with my zero clearance um, blade insert and I cut it. And then once it's, it's sized, I, I fit it all here. I do a dry fit, it's all good. And then I just glue it up, put in the biscuits and clamp it. And as you can see, the clamping is relatively simple. These pieces are really straight and flat and square. And so it doesn't take a lot to hold them down. I, I glued this one about 15 minutes ago and it already feels set up. Uh, I, I mean, this, this uh, tight bond three that I'm using on this, it dries really fast and man, once it grips, um, it's a permanent connection. It takes literally five minutes, maybe 10 minutes to set. And if you still need to move anything around after five or 10 minutes, forget it, it's, it's set, so. Anyways, uh, reminder on the project, the RAW 7020 tweeter, CSS LDW7 woofer, SDX10 subwoofer, and CSS APR10 passive radiator per cabinet. They'll be passively crossed over. And again, this is, this is what I would consider a high-end project using high-end drivers that are relatively easy to work with and um, the compromise is the expense, but the performance uh, should be quite good. So anyways, by the way, Makita cordless biscuit. It's awesome. Highly recommended, highly recommended. Amazing dust bag, like nothing comes out. It all goes in the bag. And really nice not to have to deal with a cord. I have this is the uh, the Makita LXT system, so I've got a bunch of components that that work with this. Um, and again, you can't have too many clamps, so I got clamps everywhere. These clamps are awesome. 
If you're looking for some really good uh, high value clamps, these are from Menards. And I don't remember what they're called, but they have a nice six inch reach. And these things can really hork down. I mean, ton, tons of clamping force. I mean, look at the screw on that thing. So anyways, thanks for uh, following along, guys. And uh, thanks for watching this video. Um, I'll also post a bunch of pictures and stuff. And um, I anticipate being done with this phase of the project maybe by middle of next week, hopefully. So second week of September. Jeez, it's October. No, it's September, sorry. <laughs> Second week of September, uh, and I'll be ready for another update for the next step. All right, thanks, guys.